It's a, it's a pretty heavy book for such a few pages. Um, he deals a lot with false teachers and heresy. Heresy is where somebody knows what the truth is and they teach something else. And uh, there's a lot of people do that. In uh, 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 1, we, we looked at the fact that God is the one who will judge people who teach false teachings. Uh, verse 1 of chapter 2, he says, There were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you. He said, there's going to be people who will teach false things. And listen to how he describes them. Who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. Damnable heresies. I mentioned last week, that means if you believe what they teach you, you'll go to hell. <laughs> uh, you know, what a terrible thing uh, to have somebody teach you things that keep you from knowing the Lord. Uh, so G God is very hard on this. And he, he says, we need to watch out. Be careful that we're not listening to to false teachings, that we listen to the truth. And the thing that is comforting is the fact that God will judge rightly. God is not hasty, not in a hurry. Uh, God is, is not careless. You know, he won't make a mistake. He's not unkind. He's not going to be mean about this thing. Uh, he's not inaccurate. He's always going to be right and righteous. God will judge rightly. He's holy and just, but he's also merciful and long-suffering. You know, when God judges those who've done wrong, He's also going to judge those who've done what's right, who've trusted the Lord. Uh, in uh, chapter 2, verse 9, He says, The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptation, temptations, plural, and to reserve the unjust under the day of judgment to be punished. Now, if you're going to trust the Lord, listen, you can count on it. God is going to judge you right. If you've trusted Jesus, that's the right thing. If you haven't trusted Jesus, Listen, God's going to judge that too. He's, he's going to do what's right. God always will. So we need to be, uh, beware of false teachers and false teaching. But tonight what I want us to look at is we also need to beware of heresy's behavior. Now, let me explain what I mean by that. When, peop when people teach false things, God says there's going to be certain ways they're going to behave because of what they believe and why they believe it. Now, it's easy to look at others and say, oh, okay, that's wrong, they're, they're wrong. It's sometimes harder to look at ourselves and say, hang on, I'm thinking wrong, I'm doing wrong. But both of those are important. We need to see, if people are teaching wrong, listen, we don't want to listen to them. But if we're listening and, or if we're believing and, and doing what's wrong, we need to change. We need to have a heart that wants to, to know the truth. Uh, he talks there in verse 1 about how they even deny the Lord that bought them. You know, we, it's common for Christians to say, Jesus is Lord, right? Jesus is Lord. But do we actually live that? You know, a heretic, uh, you know, he teaches things that uh, deny the Lord that bought them, he, he says there in verse 1. Well, as Christians, sometimes we do things that deny the Lord that bought us. You know, he has the right to us. He has the right to tell me what to do if I'm a Christian. And yet, if I'm not doing what the Lord says, uh, I'm, I need to be careful. Uh, do we live it? A real dividing line in, between Christianity, between what's right and what's wrong, teaching what's right and teaching what's wrong, is salvation. Salvation. And when a person trusts Jesus Christ as their Savior, when they become a Christian... The world is divided by whether it's by works or by grace. That's the dividing line. Most of the world, most religion in the world teaches that you're saved by works. You know the old, you know, you do more good works than bad and you know, God will weigh it and maybe he'll let you into heaven. That's, that's what the world teaches. That's a false teaching. The Bible says not by works of righteousness which we've done. That, that's a very important dividing line. Uh, God teaches, uh, the Bible teaches, we're saved by grace through faith. For by grace are you saved through faith. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. Uh, we're not saved by good works. We're saved unto good works. Now there's a big difference, isn't there? 
if you're a mathematician, you know, which side of the line uh, you put things on makes a big difference. Uh, and for the Christian, it's faith equals salvation, which leads to good works. The product is, is good works. For false teachers, it's faith plus works equals salvation. Well, that's not true. We're not saved by works. So when we're talking about false teaching and heresy, what we believe about salvation, what we believe about the Bible is very important. You know, this is either God's word or it's not. And uh, if we uh, don't believe that this is God's word, well, man, we're, we're putting ourselves uh, in danger. And uh, we need to be careful because a heretic will often use God's word. There's people who know the Bible better than we do who don't believe it. And boy, they love to twist it and turn it and make it say this and that. You, you take something out of context, you can make it say anything. It's, it's amazing. Be careful because they can take you out of context too. But... Uh, we, we need to believe what the Bible says and believe it the way it's said. It's very important that, that uh, we understand that there's a difference between uh, what's right and, and what's wrong. Well, that, that's the, the basis of it. But how does heresy behave? False teaching. When a, when a person is saying, well, I'm not going to really go by the Bible. I'm not really going to go by salvation. What kind of, what do we see? You know, what, what behavior do we see in, in their life? So let's go to 2 Peter uh, chapter 1 and verse 20. I'm going to give you two things tonight. Number one, heresy distorts Scripture. And we've already talked about that a little bit. But look what God says here about the Bible in 2 Peter. If I say 1 Peter, I mean 2 Peter, okay? 2 Peter 1 verse 20. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the Scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. Listen, there's a lot of religion in the world, isn't there? And most of it is either a distortion or a denial of the Word of God. It's so important. You know, that in the first chapter, he talks about how God gave this book. It's not of any private interpretation. means the people who wrote it, it wasn't their ideas. It wasn't their private ideas, Peter or Paul or whoever. It was God's, God's interpretation. There's only one interpretation of the Bible, God's. And we need to find it. Uh, and he's saying, there's going to be false teachers. And if you follow them, he calls it their pernicious ways. I can't remember exactly what that means, but it means destructive. And uh, if, if we follow false teachers, uh, when they distort Scripture, man, it's going to hurt us. Uh, I'm finding, now maybe you, maybe you don't see this, I'm not sure, but one of the great dangers today is the access we have to religion on the Internet. I mean, there's... Everything you can imagine. And boy, you can get on there. And boy, some of them are good talkers. That's exactly what he says there in, in verse 18. When they speak great swelling words, boy, they can really talk. <laughs> you know, you think, oh, that sounds good. Then you hear the next one, oh, he sounds good. Well, you hear the next one, oh, she sounds good. And, <laughs> you know, get back to God's word. Don't be misled. Uh, God I believe God intends for you to attend church. You need to see the guy who's preaching. You need to see how he lives. I heard, of, I heard of one person, they sent some money into a radio preacher. They thought, oh, he's a good preacher. And they found out that when they sent the money in, he was already in prison for fraud. <laughs> that was just a tape they were playing of him, him preaching. Listen, you can be deceived. You, you need to, to be a part of a, of a community of people in, in a local church. And the key in this that I want really to get across to you tonight is Beware of this in yourself. You know, it's one thing to see it in others. We, we don't want to submit to that. We don't want to be taught by false teachers and so on. But we don't want to distort Scripture ourselves. That's so important. You know, sometimes we're, we don't do what God would have us to do just because we're ignorant. You know, we don't know. But you know what? Ignorance is no excuse. Sometimes the reason we're ignorant is we think, well, my opinion's good enough. And we don't bother to find out, what does God say? We need to find out, what does God say? 
You see, heresy distorts scripture. We don't want to be like that. Um, th there's all kinds of things. You know, there's people who say, oh, well, it doesn't matter if you go to church or don't go to church. Listen, God says, don't forsake the assembling of yourselves together. He says he loved the church and gave himself for it. And God values it. Uh, and there's, there's some, so many others. A heresy distorts scripture. Do your best to know and obey God. The other thing, heresy distorts behavior. And he deals with that a lot here in, in 2 Peter. Uh, look at 2 Peter 2 and verse 9. Let me read several verses here. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust under the day of judgment to be punished. And here's his description. But chiefly them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness and despise government. Presumptuous are they, self-willed. They're not afraid to speak evil of dignities. Whereas angels, which are greater in power and might, bring not railing accusation against them before the Lord. But these as natural brute beasts made to be taken and destroyed, speak evil of the things that they understand not, and shall utterly perish in their own corruption. Now he's describing people who distort Scripture, their behavior. And the two main things he talks about there in verse 10 is uh, they're fleshly and they're rebellious. Fleshly and rebel rebellious. Uh, in other words, selfish and rebellious. And if you think about it, that's kind of the characteristic of our age, isn't it? Yeah, you know, people are taught it's all about me. And the main one we think about is, is me and what I think and what I feel. Well, listen, you know, when it really comes down to eternal things, it doesn't matter what I think. I don't decide what's right. The thing that matters is what God thinks, what God says. And I need to, I need to change my thinking to be like his. And he says, uh, heresy, uh, main characteristics are they pursue the flesh, not the spiritual. Uh, in, in Galatians 5.16, he says, This I say, then walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. The, 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 the flesh and the Spirit are, are opposites. And the world basically lives for the flesh. How do I feel? Oh, I didn't feel good. I won't do that. Oh, that felt good. I'll do that again. Well, that's not, that's not a good way to live your life. It's not just what feels good. It's what is good. And it's what's right. Uh, and he, he describes it as... They walk in the flesh after, in the lust of uncleanness, uh, wickedness. The, the other part there is the end of uh, the first sentence in verse 10, to despise government. Presumptuous are they, self-willed. They're not afraid to speak evil of dignities. That's just talking about rebellion. Now, we're all rebellious in, in a way. You know, somebody tells you something, you think, oh, yeah, I don't, don't want to do that. Uh, but God says that's not the way we're supposed to be. Uh, as parents, that's the main difficulty you face is training your children to not be rebellious. You, know, you don't want to, uh, you don't want them not to be able to make decisions, but you want to be able, want them to be able to make decisions based on what's right, not just on what somebody's told them to do. They're going to do the opposite. You know, uh, rebellious. The Bible says uh, they speak evil of dignities. He uses the word there that they're, they're presumptuous, they're, they despise government, you know, disrespectful, disdain authority. But that speaking evil of dignities has mainly to do with spiritual things because he relates it there to um, angels and uh, spirit beings. They have, a, they have a wrong attitude toward spiritual things. Uh, they make a mockery of the spiritual world. Oftentimes, these are people who uh, substitute physical excitement for the work of the Spirit. Uh, Jude talks, talks about this, and uh, he, he relates it to uh, a time when, when the angels had to rebuke uh, Satan. And it said, well, let me read it here. Jude, verse 8. Says these filthy dreamers defile the flesh, despise dominion, and speak evil of dignities. Yet Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, durst not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke thee. These speak evil of those things which they know not. Uh, the spiritual world is, is real. And uh, these her heretics just make a mockery of it. Uh, T. 
teach things that are heathen, teach things that are, are foolish. They oftentimes mess with the occult. It's like Israel when they would worship God in the high places. Some of you are familiar with that. High places were where they worshiped false idols. And to try and combine the two just is not right. Uh, their rebellion shows in their words and in their actions. He says they're presumptuous, they're self-willed, they speak evil of, of dignities. It starts with distorting scripture, and then it's characterized by selfishness and rebellion. Now, sometimes we're like that, and we need to, we need to stop and think, well, do I really want to be what God condemns? And that this attitude of selfishness and, and rebellion when it comes down to the behavior, if you look at verse 13, and shall receive the reward of unrighteousness as they that count it pleasure to riot in the daytime. Spots they are and blemishes, sporting themselves with their own deceivings while they feast with you. And that's a description of, of a pretty rotten person, but he particularly points out they're, they're deceiving. They're characterized by deceiving. Verse 14, having eyes full of adultery and that cannot cease from sin. They're characterized by immorality. Beguiling unstable souls and heart they have exercised with covetous practices. Cursed children. They're characterized by greed. And verse 17 and, and following, he talks about these are wells without water, clouds that are carried with a tempest, of whom the mist of darkness is reserved forever. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lust of the flesh. Uh, they, they're characterized by pride. Verse 19, while they promise them liberty, they themselves are servants of corruption. Uh, they are characterized by lies. Now, when you look at false teaching, what you see are, are people who are fleshly and rebellious and who are characterized by deceit, immorality, greed, pride, lies. Now, that kind of life doesn't bring a lot of happiness. And, and at that point, sometimes people say, oh, this is miserable. I want to change my life. And along comes a false teacher and says, we'll help you change your life. You give me $1,000, you join our church, you do what I say, and boy, you, ooh, you'll be happy. And you, you go to heaven and have 24 virgins, whatever. Depends upon which version of, of false teaching you, you're looking at. See, when you say, I want to change my life, beware, you're a prime target for false teachers. Now, I'm not saying that we shouldn't come to a point where we want a, a change, but we need to go to the Lord for that change. The main warning in this passage is obvious. Beware of false teachers. Listen, false teachers can help you. They've got a lot of practical things they can, they can show you. <laughs> But that's not what we need. We need the Lord. Uh, if your life is a mess, it's because of sin. And the obvious solution is to believe and follow what the Bible teaches. That's the answer, is to see, well, what does God say? This is God's word. And, you know, the, their problem started at the beginning when they began to distort Scripture. Now, the application I want to make tonight is to us. I hope none of you are planning on starting a false religion and, you know, being a false teacher, you know, the, the church of, insert your name. Um, but these things affect us, don't they? You know, as, I, as, I, as we looked at some of those verses, I mean, we've been guilty, us, we, here tonight, we've been guilty of deceit, of immorality in our thoughts and actions, greed, pride, lies. I mean, those, those are the end result of a person who started out by distorting Scripture, living selfishly and, and rebelliously. And, and when we do that, it comes out in, in sin. Now, um, even as Christians, we're sometimes afflicted by these, these characteristics. And if we follow it back, we need to see the change that we can see the change that we need to make. Um, we don't want to be carnal and disobedient. I hope not. And... Uh, uh, we don't want to distort Scripture. We want to have God's Word to, to lead us and to guide us. Um, if we're s selfish and rebellion, it's not... Let me say that word right. If we're selfish and rebellious, it's not because we're following Scripture. It's because we're not following Scripture. 
And, and I want you to, to get a hold of this, this message tonight and sure, apply it to the world around us. You know, there's people who are false teachers. There's false religions. We don't want to believe that. Don't base what you believe on what you feel. Don't base what you believe on some idea that comes into your head. Listen, just because you have something that comes into your head doesn't mean it's from God. God will never contradict His Word. Um, listen, God won't, men, God won't call you to leave your family, to abandon your family to serve Him. God calls a, a man to look after his family. I, I've talked to more than one person who said, oh, you know, God told me to do this, and God told me to do that, and handed, handed my wife my ring. Listen, two of the most important things God's given you is your family and your church. Both of them should be important to you. But we don't want to be like the heretics. We don't want to be like the false teachers. Uh, get the basics right. Get, you know, if you, if you see yourself being rebellious and fleshly, just looking for what makes you feel good, uh, get back to God's Word and commit yourself to obeying God. Uh, we don't want to be people who are characterized by selfishness and, and rebellion. Turn with me to Romans chapter 12, and let me just give you two things to, to, go, to go with tonight before we quit. Romans chapter 12, and uh, verses 1 and 2. Romans 12, 1 says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. One of the first things that we need to do as, a, as Christians is to die to self. Die to self. Uh, in, in Luke, Jesus, Jesus said, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. You know, most of the time, we, we live very alive to self. What do they think about me? What do I want? How do I feel? What do I want? God says you need to die to self. He talks there about it being a living sacrifice. Someone has said the problem with the living sacrifice is it keeps crawling off the altar. And it's true. We, daily, daily we need to commit ourselves to not just going by self, going by what, what God would have us to do. And then secondly, you need to prove God's will. Verse 2 of Romans 12, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Prove God's will. It doesn't mean that you work out all the logic and see if, it's, if it makes sense. Proving has to do with putting it to the test. If, you, if you're going to buy a machine and it says it'll take 500 kilos and do this, you put 500 kilos on it and you see if it does that, you know? You prove it. <laughs> See if it works. Well, what God is saying, put him to the test. Prove his will. When, when he says in verse 1 that, that dying to self is your reasonable service, that just means that's the least you can do. <laughs> it's, your, it's reasonable that you give your heart and life and your soul and, and your time to God. That's reasonable. That's the least you can do. Uh, don't allow heresies behavior in your own life. Honor God's word. Don't be selfish. Die to self. Don't be rebellious. Live God's word. Day by day, moment by moment. Uh, trust the Lord and allow him to, to use you. you know, God warns that he knows how to uh, deliver the righteous and he knows how to, to judge the wicked. God will do right and we need to commit ourselves to him. Now, let's go to him in, in prayer this evening. With our heads bowed and, and eyes closed, maybe the Lord is speaking to your heart tonight about some areas of, of your life. And maybe you just need to take that before the Lord. Father, thank you so much for your goodness. Thank you for your word that speaks to our heart. And Lord, keep us from being presumptuous and, and being rebellious and selfish. Lord, help us to love you and to love each other. And Lord, help us to put aside our, our own will, our own way. And, and Lord, to, to trust you. Well, I pray if there are those here tonight that are not saved, that uh, somehow through this message, through your word, through the testimony of others, that they might 
uh, come to you and trust you as Lord and Savior. Uh, help us, Father, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to end with this song 65, Jesus, Keep Me Near the Cross. Page 65 in, in your songbook there. Get Azrael to come in and lead us in that. Maybe uh, if the Lord is speaking to your heart, maybe you just need to do business with Him right where you're seated. And um, if you need to talk to me or to someone, uh, seek me out after, after the service. Be glad to, to chat with you and sh show you what God's Word says about it. So page 65. Now let's stand together and we'll sing.